I dropped H.264 like a rock. Now I edit with fire codex, sexy codex, and okay, maybe I, maybe I got carried away. Since forever, creators have been wanting to take an SD card out of their camera, put it in their computer, and immediately start editing. While that is the dream, H.264 is heavily compressed. It's meant to be a viewing codec, not an editing codec. So it might start out fine, but once you have 100 cuts, color grades, graphics, animations, things start to get choppy and hard to edit. So what's the alternative? First, let me explain what a codec actually is. The word codec is an amalgamation of encode and decode. It's simply a compression algorithm applied to a file. Then whatever you're viewing the video on or editing knows what the compression algorithm is and uncompresses it in order to present it to the viewer. Without compression, files would be unwieldy. They'd be too large to be distributed on the internet, on media like this. Here's some quick math as to why. Each pixel stores color in three bytes. A 1920 by 1080 screen is 2,073,600 pixels. With three bytes per pixel, that's 6,220,800 bytes. That's 0.006 gigabytes for a single frame. That doesn't sound too bad. Now multiply that by 60 frames per second. Now multiply that by 60 seconds in a minute, and you're sitting at 21.6 gigabytes per minute. Not so great anymore. A lot of cameras, including the one I'm using right now, will record by default into H.264. Some may come with other options, but mine doesn't. Even recording software like OBS will by default record to H.264. H.264 is great for viewing media. It's a strong compression that also gives you a pretty decent looking image. But that strong compression is exactly what makes it hard to edit. For every frame that's pulled up, the computer has to decode that compression to show you the frame. But because of the way H.264 works, it also needs previous frames in order to build the current frame because every frame doesn't store every single pixel, especially if there's no changes. That's why if you're ever watching a football game and you see confetti rapidly fall everywhere, the image stability just falls apart. So why the hate for H.264? If you have a relatively decent computer, H.264 probably won't give you any trouble. But given enough effects and cuts, H.264 will start to become a little bit on the sluggish side. Now I have watched someone take H.265 footage from a Sony A7S III, which is very hard footage to edit, and throw it into an M1 Max MacBook Pro. That was also a $5,000 computer and most of you are gamers, so you're probably not editing on Macs anyway. So we're going to talk about PCs. NVIDIA GPUs do come with a built-in H.264 encoder decoder called NVENC. This is what is known as hardware acceleration. The GPU basically has a bunch of parts inside that make it easy to work with this kind of footage. When you get a big enough project, I still find hardware acceleration still kind of struggles a bit. If you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you do not get access to hardware acceleration. Now I do think the studio version is money well spent, but I also understand that that is $300 and it is a lot of money. If you're using Premiere Pro, you do have access to hardware acceleration, but Premiere Pro is not free. So for the most part, unless you're willing to pay some money, you're not getting access to hardware acceleration anyway. We also all know about the memes regarding Premiere Pro and how it crashes all the time. But I will say, once you start using an actual editing codec, I find that it doesn't really crash at all. What are editing codecs? Proxies work by re-rendering the footage that you have at a smaller resolution and a lower bitrate. Typically becomes significantly easier to edit with. Then you just have to remember to turn on the proxies while you're editing and to turn them off while you're exporting. Otherwise your export looks like garbage. I personally do not like proxies. I find they're kind of a two step forward, one step back kind of deal. They're still H.264, it's still not an editing codec. So let's talk about DNX HD. DNX HD was developed by Avid. It's meant to be an editing and a presentation codec. While I'll be calling this DNX HD, keep in mind that that covers resolutions up to 1080 and then after that the codec uses DNX HR. DNX HD is easy for a computer to edit because each individual frame is stored with all of its data intact with no need to reference previous frames. This means the computer just grabs reads the frame and displays it and you're done. There is a storage and a time cost to using DNX HD and those costs are broken down like this. The time cost is this. There's no hardware acceleration for DNX HD. If you watch my video on how to record videos like Markiplier, you're going to have a double wide video that you're going to split into two parts. If you're going to be rendering anyway, you may as well try rendering out to DNX HD. 
unless you're trying to turn around some super fast project on a tight deadline you probably have time to spare i highly recommend setting a project up to do some prep work let it render go get a snack take a nap get some water come here self-care take care of yourself because each individual frame is stored there is a storage cost to this as well you're looking at around three gigabytes per minute and so for an hour of footage you're looking at around 180 gigabytes if you're a gamer doing the double wide method that i just mentioned you've got two files so we're doubling up so you're at about 360 gigs for an hour this is where i suggest if you're an editor to invest in an editing drive i personally have an additional m2 one terabyte ssd in my pc that i use just for storing projects that i'm currently working on that's a little overkill because that reads and writes at about 3000 megabytes per second according to an article by larry jordan you only need about 400 megabytes of read and write speed in order to successfully edit a 1080p project and i have a link to that article down below if you want to read more secondly i'm a big fan of samsung t7 ssds but they're also a little bit on the pricier and overkill side Based on the comments I have read on my other videos, a lot of people here use the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So hardware acceleration is, for the most part, out. If you can spare the storage space and the time, I highly recommend giving DNxHD a try on a big project at least once. You will be surprised at just how much better your project is maintained and performs when using a proper editing codec. If you can't swing those, then H.264 proxies are probably your next bet. I just don't, I just personally don't like them. Now that you're smart on codecs, you're going to go over here and watch this video on how to make cool vertical videos so you can get lots of views on TikTok and have a good one.